Hello and welcome to the Gaming Chronicles. Today we will continue Shining in the Darkness on the Sega Genesis Classics Library. So let's fire it up. Alrighty, in our previous episode we went back to the Cave of Courage. Um, we got the Orb of Truth. So now we're going to the Cave of Truth because we have the Orb of Truth so that we can um, pass through a place that was previously unpassable. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, we don't need to go to the castle or the town. Let's go straight into the labyrinth. Alright, so from the entrance here, we are going to take this first left. And then go straight to the end of the hall. And lo and behold, it looks kind of funny. If we search, it's nothing, but if we use our orb... Oh, we forgot to sell that bronze knife. Oh, well. It reveals the Grim Wall. Now, this fight's pretty easy. Uh, as long as our... Uh, slow spell procs... Ah. Uh, ouch. <coughs> Anyway, as long as our slow spell procs, as I was trying to say, um, it only takes one round. Yeah. Uh, but since it didn't, it takes two rounds. But anyway, uh, they've got a strong attack, but they've only got about 60, 70 hit points. Alrighty, so from here, um, we'll just head straight north. Or up, whatever. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know what is supposed to be north. What's up? I don't. I don't know. On my graph paper, I have it marked as north because of how I referenced the map from the entrance of the map. Uh, every everything is referenced from the entrance of the of the maze. So to me, it's north. I don't know if that that's what it actually is. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Uh, so we'll see the Minotaurs start to use the quick spell, um, which really, I, I don't know, it doesn't seem like it does a lot, um, especially when they just spam it, because uh, it doesn't stack, and as you can see, we're still hitting them pretty hard. Um. <clears throat> okay, so we'll come back up here, and then this way, this way, this way, this way. We want to take a left here. Oh, oh, good. Grim fowls. Lots of grim fowls. Um, we will try and get through these fights without using any, um, well, as few um, spell points as possible, because I'm pretty sure we're gonna need um, we're gonna need as much, as much magic points as we can save for the actual cave of truth. So we will ask the Grimfowl RNG to be kind and not to paralyze us. Come on now. Alright, there we go. So I've complained a fairly uh, a fair amount about this game. But but really, there were there were quite a uh, there were a handful of innovations about this game that uh, Ah, uh, the Darkwing, Darkwing Duck, let's get dangerous. Alright, anyway, beside, aside from that, sorry, random, um, breaking into song, um, so first of all, there was the menu, the icon-based menuing, that was new, to, um, and, and e even when, uh, let's see, this game had already come out, to, and even though Shining Force won, uh, Legacy of, let's see, we need to turn left here, yeah. Uh, oh, hello. Um, the Legacy of Great Intention. Um, that was the first Shining game I played. Still, the the uh, icon-based menuing was was new to me at that time as well. Um, I I believe there were some who said that. Uh, oh wait, did I play Shining Force One first, or did I play Fantasy Star Three first? I think I played Fantasy Star 3 first. Anyway, Fantasy Star 3 also used icon-based menuing. Um, the Shining series just formatted a little differently. 
and it was more, um, I don't know if it was more considered more user friendly, that's probably debatable, um, <clears throat> but it, it definitely caught a lot of people's eye, and it, uh, the, the menuing itself made the RPG series, um, the Shining series attractive because it was, you know, it's easy to navigate. One, it, it, uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but not much. And so once you got used to the menuing, um, <clears throat> it was uh, very, very easy uh, to navigate throughout the rest of the game. So anyway, that was one thing that I remember the Shining game stood out to me personally as well. You know, even, even as a kid, you're like, yeah, the Shining game is different because of how it menus. Um, and, and menuing to any RPG, of course, is a big deal. Um, if you have a game that has bad menuing, uh, then that can that can drive a player away from an RPG. Um, and e even if like uh, combat is fun, and if um, you know combat storyline, like everything can be fun, but if the if menuing is a pain. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll just downright sometimes quit playing a game and just say, no, I can't do this anymore. Uh, I have to take a break. <clears throat> anyway, so the menuing was pretty innovative. Um, and I, let's see. I didn't play all the Shining games, but um, the ones that I did, they all had this format. So there was this one, Shining in the Darkness, Shining Gaiden, uh, Shining Force Gaiden. Um, let's see, Shining Force One, Shining Force Two, Shining Force Gaiden, um, and then the Shining Force Ga Gaiden had two. It seemed like I played five of the Shining games. Anyway. <clears throat> Uh, toadstools are not fun, if I remember correctly. Uh, let's go ahead and use Bolt on the Hydrax mobs. Because I, oh dang it, they resisted as well. Okay, so I think all of these, I think all of these mobs are, um, resistant to magic. <clears throat> And here we go, Paralyzing Powder. Let's just go ahead and take care of the Hydraxes because we don't want to be paralyzed. Oh, come on. I can't remember... Okay, so they put us to sleep. I can't remember if, uh, like, the mobs in the back row have a higher chance of being missed or not. Uh, I haven't been keeping track to... to uh, pay it or to notice if that's the thing or not. But anyway, this is annoying. Um, it's a good thing Hero can do some actual damage because Pyra and My Milo, he would he would definitely be doing better if we would have been able to afford that um, that Madu, uh, that, that offhand shield uh, that's flipping awesome because it gives both defense and attack. Uh, so... Anyway, since we can't afford it yet, <clears throat> we will continue to struggle. Yeah. The, the pacing of this game, though, is 100% determined by your random encounters. 100%. Oops. Yeah, take, that, take, take out the Hydrax mobs first. <clears throat> oh, come on, Milo. Can't miss. Can't afford to miss those hits. I don't think we're low on level. Um, I think like between level 16 and 18 is the recommended levels for for this part of the game. And like I said in uh, I think either the previous episode or the one before that, uh, that that's one of the reasons I get I you know go out of my way to get all of the chests is because it <clears throat> typically gives us all the extra c encounters that we need to um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me to uh, to get to the level that we need to be at 
Okay, so the Cave of Truth has some um, unfriendly mobs in like in the pools, so in the puddles. So if we encounter puddles, we definitely do not want to um, encounter the sea stallions because the kill waves, they were not a big deal. Sea stallions, on the other hand, we do not want to fight them. And, oh. Let's fight the Darkwing first because they can poison us. <clears throat> the Death Grins, yeah, they can still hit us hard um, when they when they use their kick ability. But uh, I don't know. Maybe the kick ability is worse than. Let's uh. Let's use the level two. There we go. One thing I didn't understand <clears throat> was, um, let's see. We are, okay, so we're. I think if we, oh, that's lovely. <clears throat> I was gonna say. If we walk backwards onto the pool, um, man, five of these toadstools, and great, they just took out, hold on, let's see, are they, do they resist burst, or bla blast, let's try blast on them, uh, let's try freeze, I don't know, they might just be resistant to all magic. Yeah. I know that Bolt doesn't do anything to him. Oh, hey, Blast 2 did something. I don't understand what flexing muscles do. Is it supposed to heighten its attack? Or does it decrease? Does it decrease its defense? I don't understand what the flexes it muscles ability does. All right, get him. There we go. Okay, so let's uh, walk backwards into the puddle. So we have two spaces, right? So one, two. Now let's turn. Oh, that scared me for a bit. They just surprised us by flexing their muscles. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. Oh, let's cast blast two again. That was effective. Uh, dang it, it's not the whole group. Ah, whatever. <clears throat> it's better than nothing. Alright, there we go. Awesome blow, very good. This is taking forever. Uh, what else was I gonna say? I don't remember. Um, oh, the uh, yeah, the sea stallions. I think I think the mechanic works the same way with the sea stallions as it does the uh, kill waves. Um, as long as you're not looking at, your, as long as you're not one space away, looking at the puddle, we shouldn't spawn any of them. Um, now later on, I might be because uh, I think we're gonna come back here. Yeah. We, we do have to come back um, to all the caves that we've visited so far, I think, <clears throat> uh, once we get the uh, Selkie. Um, let's see, let's turn this way. Actually, no, let's just... This leads us to a Wisdom Seed. We'll just we'll come here just because. Um, but uh, we're going to just drop it immediately because we don't need it. And it's not worth hanging on to to sell. Okay, so we want to take this first left. Yeah. And then come up here. Now these things are interesting. These little spinners. So, we hop on it, and then it ejects us um, basically to the left of where we entered. 
Um, so... Let's see, there's, um, we want to go out here because there's a chest at the end of, uh, this little corridor. Uh, let's go ahead and just attack. We should be able to, um, ouch. Oh, the kick didn't hit a awesome blow, that's good. And the chest that we're about to open, it's only 50 gold, but, you know, it's just, uh, it's fine. Alright, there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, they're running away. The Minotaurs are running away. That's surprising. Okay. <clears throat> Alrighty, 50 gold. 50 gold is 50 gold. 2,500. I can't remember how much the Madu was for. Okay, so now we have to do this song and dance again. <sighs> uh, let's see. Oh. Ooh, if we enter it backwards, that's... Okay, so that's something. Um... I thought that it didn't matter what direction you entered it. <clears throat> it just spun your party 270 degrees and made you exit relative to your position. So maybe, um, maybe it's just, it spins you relative to the direction you're facing. Because that changes things, that makes that easier. Ugh. These quick spells, like whenever, whenever the mobs, um, you know, waste time with these self buffs. I mean, it's fine because they're not damaging our party, but at the same time, it's like, uh, really, I'd just assume you attack us. It's bit, if you're only gonna do like one point of damage, right? Okay, so let's try this. We go on it backwards. It spins us 270 degrees. Okay, so that's that's better. I never even thought about that. Hmm. Of course, there were a lot of things that I didn't think about, you know, as a kid, uh, and, um, let's see, we want to go, oh, we're gonna do some backwards walking action, because we do not want to look at that puddle, uh, bull snout, I don't remember how dangerous these guys are, so we'll go ahead and attack them first, of course, Four points of damage. Well, that guy ran away. Well, the bull snouts didn't even get a chance to attack us, which is fine with me. All right, very good. Okay, so this, uh, we're gonna back up into a spinner. And that'll, oh, six toadstools? Are you kidding me? Uh, let's go ahead and cast Blast 4. Um,. Jeez. And I don't think it matters if we cast whatever we cast here. Uh, it's all going to be low damage. Let's just cast Bolt, I guess. Because they resist a lot of it. <clears throat> Not a lot, but like 25%, I think, it seems like. Alright, we got one of them down. <laughs> oh, man. Alright, there we go. And one more. We stand victorious. Uh, what's even in this chest? I don't even remember my notes on the map. Um, oh, it's another wood staff. Okay. 
That'll give me some extra gold. Come on, let's go, let's go. Nice hit, Milo. Alright, very nice. Alright, fantastic. Oh, hello. Let's, uh, yeah, let's take that to get the death grin first. Alright, didn't poison me, that's a good sign. And there we go. Just to make sure, yeah, okay, no one got poisoned. Just had to double check, I didn't see it pop up. But, oh, uh, okay. Alrighty, we... Ouch. Okay, we'll turn around and step on the spinner backwards, so that'll spit us out where we want to go. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's cast heal two on hero. Let's go ahead and cast uh, heal one on Pyra. There we go. Now, if we're fast enough, we we might be able to get to the end of this uh, of the trial in one go. Um, we'll we'll see though. Yeah, let's just fight it out. Let's just bludgeon it out. <clears throat> doesn't affect. Doesn't affect. Doesn't affect. Good. Thank you very much. RNG for being in my favor. Doesn't affect hero. As long as it doesn't affect hero, that's the most important thing. <clears throat> Alright, there we go. Alright, nice work, everybody. Um... Dang it, I got turned around again. There's a puddle up ahead. So that's where I came from, right? Shoot. I'm all turned around now. Hate it when this happens. No, that's a spinner. That's not a puzzle. Okay. Um... Okay, so if we just turn around and then take that left, we'll be fine. <laughs> oh man, it's embarrassing how many times this uh, this, this actually happens where I just get... I, I just lose complete track of where I am in the maze. Uh, even though I'm looking at a map. Uh, <clears throat> dungeon crawlers... <clears throat> excuse me. Dungeon crawlers were never my were never my strong suit as far as, you know, memorizing the, uh, the map. Okay, so the left should be this stuff. Now, there is a chest at the end of this hallway. But just because it's and it's only healer fruit, so it's not something that it, we really need to get. So we're not going to get the chest, just in the entrance of not wanting to drain my my magic points. Um, so that is a chest that we're going to leave un um, undiscovered, untouched. All right, we got a side block uh, incoming. These guys aren't too bad. And they do uh, a little bit of damage on us. Not bad. Alright, there we go. Fire Staff. What? Yes. Uh. Discard Smelling Salts. Yes. Nice. Uh, Pyra. Now... 
It's less attack. Maybe I can just use it as an item. I think it casts Blaze 3. I think that's... Uh, and that's why I'm so... Yeah, it casts Blaze 3. That's why I'm excited about it. Okay, so we'll leave the wood tap equipped. But I think that we can just use it um, as a backpack item. Um, and it casts Blaze 3, which is uh, a pretty big improvement over Blaze 2. Okay, so down, not this one, but the second left is a chest. And this is just deep poison, right? Ah, uh, no, we don't need to discard something. We will leave it. Alright, let's go... Yeah, let's go ahead and... Whoa, hello. Ooh, this will be a perfect time to use our... Ooh. Nope, I didn't want to use the Royal Tiara. I wanted to use the Fire Staff. <laughs> <clears throat> so, the Bull Stouts are hitting more than one. Okay. Item. Fire Staff. Yeah, look at that. 45 points of damage, that's what I'm talking about. Nice. Okay, so now, we don't want to go down that path, but if we go down here, we'll get a nice little chest beak battle. Oh, come on. Now, we don't need to use the uh, fire stab indiscriminately, but uh, it will definitely ease a lot of our battles. I think this is... Um, oh, that's right. They're not chest beaks. They're ghosts. Oh, crap. Um, well... No! <laughs> that's why you don't... That's why you don't want to, uh... <laughs> that's why you don't want to fight ghosts. Crap! <laughs> uh... Oh, thank goodness, hero. Hero is the hero. Okay, well... Um, we've got to go back to town... <laughs> to uh, revive Milo. Dang it, I forgot that the the trapped chests are no longer chest beaks. Okay, well, that will uh, cut our episode, sh episode shorter than I was planning. <laughs> so, oops. More setbacks, it happens. <clears throat> uh, poor Milo, he al he's always the one who gets killed. Oh, he's more considerably more expensive now. I was kind of close. Yeah, sure. Record my exploits. Uh, yeah. Let's let's see. Actually, uh, let's go to the armor and. Uh Isn't there a repair option? Huh. All right, whatever. Um We want to sell the bronze knife. Uh, yeah, there was one more thing, yeah. No, never mind. Okay, yeah, let's, um, buy... Weapon. 
the Madu. Milo. <clears throat> yes, um, sale. Oh, wait, no. Uh, we're gonna give he or sell heroes leather shield, and then we'll give. Uh, no. Okay, uh, I thought that the armorer could repair our stiff. Was that not available until shining in the uh, shiny force? Huh. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and take care of our gear. I'm a little perplexed. Um, nice. Yeah, look at that. Plus 15 attack and plus 20 defense. That is fantastic. <clears throat> oh, wait. Um, let's see if we can buy an upgrade for Milo's helmet. Um, helm. Fur hood. Tenth. Yes, we want a fur hood for, for Milo. Um... Uh, no. Yeah, and then sell the woven hood. No, nope. and no. Nope. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, let's go over to the armor, or not the armor, the weapon shop to see if they have a, um, if they have a repair option. No, they don't. Huh. Well, hmm. Um, no. No. Okay. Oh, let's uh, rest at the end. Yep, good night. Good morning. Alrighty. Uh, that'll that'll conclude this episode. Man, those ghosts, they really... They really threw a wrench in the cogs, didn't they? Man, that's how it is sometimes. Alrighty. Well, uh, we will return to the Cave of Truth in our next episode. And I will not be... Um, opening any more trapped chests in this cave. So. Uh, yeah. And I think there's like one or two more. Alright, anyway. Until our next episode, when we continue on the Trials of the Ancients in Shining in the Darkness. So long for now.